Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about variadic generics, which is, I'll explain what it means in a second, uh, which is brand new in Python 3.11. Uh, it's actually so new that the type checker, well, MyPy doesn't support it yet, so I will be showing you a few examples with uh, PyWrite instead, the uh, JavaScript one, which <laughs> um, I also have not found any usages of this yet. I searched all the code on GitHub and I was only able to find uh, one set of usages, which is in Facebook researches, uh, stubs for torch. So we'll be taking a look at that. I'm going to introduce all the new syntax. Yes, there's new syntax for this feature, uh, as well as the two new typing things that are available. Okay. So what is a variadic generic? So we've talked about generics in another video. I will link that in the description. Generics allow you to kind of templatize a function based on the types, not really care about what types they are but preserve them in inputs and outputs. A variadic generic allows you to have any number of types, but have that, you know, uh, be variable or variadic. Uh, it allows you to have, for instance, like n-dimensional arrays that represent a bunch of different sub-dimensions. Uh, and actually most of the motivation around variadic generics is actually to support things like NumPy arrays or uh, torch tensors or other you know, multi-dimensional types. That was most of the motivation. Um, but yeah, that's the idea behind variadic generics. So I'm gonna introduce all the new things and show you kind of how they work. So there are two new members in typing. Uh, one of them is type var tuple, which is, <laughs> it implements the variadic generic type. Uh, it is typically written as this type var tuple uh, TS. Unlike generic, it does not yet support bound or variance or, you know, the, the other options in type variables. Uh, it just supports the name for now. The pep mentioned that those may be added in the future, but they didn't want to spec it out just yet. They wanted to see how it gets used in the wild before they actually spend the effort to specify and, and you know, make that a, an actual thing. And what this represents is a sequence of types, and it could be anywhere from zero types to infinite number of types, and it will be substituted inside signatures. Now, <laughs> I haven't actually thought of a way to use this in real code that uh, allows you to write, you know, a, an n-dimensional class, because there's no way to unfold the types uh, with you know, and keep it actually internally sound. The only cases that I've seen this be useful so far, and maybe I just don't know what I'm doing, the only cases I've seen this being useful so far is in stubs, where you want to uh, preserve the input type and the output type. And I'll talk about unpack in a second. This is a special case, uh, but you can see here there is a D type. If you're familiar with MyPy, that's kind of the, the lowest level data type that you're using in your array. Uh, and then you have your variable types, uh, your, your additional dimensions, and that's where these uh, this unpack and the type variable type comes into play. So this is this is actually tensor of one type and then any number of types afterwards. Uh, and this is the only use case that I saw where you get an input of that type and you output the same type. That's basically all I've seen this been useful for. Uh, I think the eventual goal of this is to allow these individual indices to be numbers and then be able to multiply them and do all sorts of uh, you know, shape arithmetic. Basically, like you know, being able to do, uh, being able to preserve vector types in, um, in, in the type system, which you can't really do right now. Uh, but didn't find any examples of those, and Pep six forty six specifically does not lay those out. Uh, the other thing that I alluded to here is unpack. That is the second thing that comes from this type, uh, from this Pep. Import unpack. And unpack is just a unpack is a backwards compatibility for the brand new syntax that's introduced. So the new syntax that's introduced is anywhere you use a type variable, you must star expression it. So if you're going to make a class that's generic on this uh, type variable, generic of course from typing import generic, uh, you're going to make a class that's generic on that type variable tuple. You need to use the star operator. Now, uh, in old versions of Python, older than 3.11, this is invalid syntax. You can't star a, um, 
a bracketed access in a uh, in a tuple. So this is this is a syntax error in you know Python three point ten, for instance. Uh, yeah, expected a colon. <laughs> this, why did it put the arrow there? It feels like the arrow's in the wrong spot, but whatever. <laughs> I know, that's weird. I wonder what it looks like in three eight. Yeah, three eight at least has the arrow in the right spot. Weird. Uh, but you can see that it's it's valid syntax in 3.11, and these things exist there. Now, in order to make this uh, concept work in older versions of Python, they introduced this unpack type. So you can, instead of calling star on this, you can call unpack. And that will allow you to have uh, syntax compatible with old versions, of course. You know, you'd have to use typing extensions and such, but at least it... Uh, I'll, I'll, at least it's, you know, you can you can parse the syntax of it. Okay, so that's type var tuple. It represents some number of types uh, and unpack as well as star, which is how you use a type variable tuple in a signature. Now, I wanted to show you like a very silly example of this here. Uh, this is basically the same example that comes from the pep, but uh, I'm gonna simplify it slightly for you here. We're not gonna actually implement the functions because as far as I can tell, it's not possible to implement them with the given uh, mechanics, but we will make a stub-like function and use reveal type to show that uh, the type checker forwards the types properly. Uh, so let's say that we uh, add this generic array type, and you can imagine this is an n-dimensional array similar to a NumPy array, and we're going to multiply it by a scalar. So we're going to say self and t as a, or x as an int, and this is going to return uh, our array with our type variable. Of course, we're going to use the Python 3.11 syntax just because I think it's a little bit more succinct and kind of demonstrates this. Uh, so if we were to make one of these, a array float int stir, I don't know, whatever it is. Um, we can't actually construct one of these properly, so we're just going to do this. Uh, and then we did reveal type on a.multiply multiply. Two, maybe this would be called multiply scalar or something like that. If you're actually dealing dealing with your array types, uh, we need to npm i pyrite. Is that the right one? <laughs> I can never remember whether it's pyrite the mineral or pyrite the. I think I think this is the right one. <laughs> I hope it's the right one. Uh, yeah, I think this is the right one. Uh, so if we call pyrite on this, pyrite I believe supports this. My pi does not. Hard pack requires Python. Oh. Python version 3.11, Python no dash version. There we go, okay. Uh, so we can see here that PyWrite knows to preserve our input type here based on our multiply. Uh, you could also imagine doing an add dimension, add dimension which has uh, T and returns an array with some type prefixed. Let's say we had another type variable up here. E equals type var. Uh, and so this allows you to do kind of type arithmetic. So if we did reveal type a dot add dimension, well, let's pass a string in there. So we get a string as our first dimension. Uh, yeah, so you can see now it's given us back a new bigger <laughs> uh, type variable. And so this is kind of how you would use it there. And with type variables, you can append and you can put afterwards. So maybe instead of doing it at the beginning, we can do it at the end. Um, you can see here that we put stir under the end here. Now note that you can't use more than one type variable tuple. And this is because it would be ambiguous to the type checker, like where the first one ends and where the second one begins. Uh, so the current spec only allows a single type var tuple when you're building out a generic like that. Uh, so that's the main part of the PEP, is introducing these two types. There are some other side effects that happened as a result of introducing this. Uh, the first of this is tuple uh, is now unpackable. So now you can combine tuples together, which I think is really cool. It allows you to kind of you know, build new tuple types just by concatenating two tuples together. Uh, so, for instance, if we had, 
for instance, if we had, I don't know, T1, which is a tuple of int stir, and T2, which is a tuple of float stir, we can make a, oh, uh, alias. We can actually have a third tuple, uh, which is the combination of those two. So we can do star T1, star T2. And if we do reveal type, is that gonna work? Is, is it gonna tell us the right type there? Unknown. Uh, oh, type alias. <laughs> right. Getting ahead of myself. Type alias. Uh, yeah, so you can see type argument list can have at most one unpacked type var tuple. Oh, maybe you can't combine tuples. Huh. <laughs> it tells me the right type here. <laughs> I guess this is not allowed. Yeah, this is probably not allowed for the same reason that multiple type variables are not allowed. Uh, but let's just say that we added stir onto the end of uh, T1, for instance. So you can extend a tuple. I guess you can't combine more than one together. Yeah, so you can see we get tuple int stir stir. So we were able to combine one tuple with another. Uh, this also means that you could do some really cool things with, uh, with uh, variable length tuples. So this tuple, uh, this type alias here now re represents a tuple that has any number of integers and then one string at the end, uh, which can be useful for a few things, but we'll show those in a, in a second. But yeah, you can see here we get tuple of, <laughs> the syntax for representing it is a little bit silly because it actually puts this start expression in line, uh, but this represents a tuple that is any number of ints and then a string at the end. So that's kind of cool. I think there is a few cases where I've I've wanted something like this before, but there wasn't really a good way to do it. Uh, now there's a nice syntax for it. And of course, if you wanted in older versions of Python, you can use unpack instead of the star operator because yeah, the star operator is uh, specific to Python 3.11. The other thing that this added, which is also really cool, is you can now type star args. So if we had, uh, you know, before when you type star args, this meant, um, you know, uh, this syntax here meant that every positional argument to f had to be an integer. So you had no way of saying like, the first argument has to be an int and then the rest are strings, or it happens to match a particular pattern. Uh, you could only say that they were all one uniform type. And so it meant that a lot of stuff ended up just being star args any, which <laughs> wasn't that useful. You lose all your typing information, you lose your type checker. Uh, but now you can use start expressions here or unpack in older versions. Uh, and uh, is it tuple? I think you have to use type for a tuple. Uh, I don't remember exactly. <laughs> I think it's type for a tuple, yeah. Um, so now you can, you can uh, type these using uh, the start expression. So let's say, I don't know, this returned uh, list of star t's. Uh, so maybe this <laughs> this is just a silly function that go calls list of args. Um, and type for tuple is not allowed in this context. Okay, maybe <laughs> maybe Pyrite hasn't implemented this back, or maybe I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is right. I think this is the example in the pet. args as a type variable tuple. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Pyrite just hasn't implemented this bit yet. So this is very bleeding edge and com not completely working yet. But uh, but yeah, this allows you to type the, the variables of this. I believe you can use tuple directly. Yeah, you can use tuple without having to uh, have a type variable. So you can... You can um, you can type things nice and succinctly. So yeah, this is an example of, uh, maybe that one will be supported. Let's see. Star tuple stir dot dot dot. Burn this dot join args. Maybe something like this. Uh, now this is a silly example. <laughs> uh, let's do, the first argument is an int and the rest are strings. Um, so, Arg zero plus args one colon. Um, oh, type ver is covariant. Interstir cannot be assigned to type stir. Maybe if we do arg zero rest equals args. Gonna know 
<laughs> it doesn't know because I'm using indexing, probably. Arg zero. Oh, it should just be arg zero. Maybe it's gonna work. Hey, okay. So it's happy with this. So it it knows that this is an integer. Reveal type arg zero and reveal type rest. It should tell us that this is an int. Yeah, int and lister. So yeah, you can basically combine. <laughs> Syntax looks a little bit gross, uh, but you can combine uh, a, a variable length tuple with a fixed length tuple, and that, that allows you to type star args to some extent. Uh, I believe there is additional an additional pep that allows star star quarks to be typed, but that's actually not spec'd here at all. So if we look for quarks, for instance, uh, you'll see that this is not valid here. But I believe uh, there was another pep that allowed type dicts to be used for star star quarks. So now you can completely and variatically type uh, both of the splat parameters. Uh, but anyway, that's all that gets introduced with PEP 646. So brand new syntax allowing star in bracket and access, uh, type var tuple and unpack, well, type var tuple being your variadic type variables and unpack being the backport of the star operator. Uh, and then well, it, we just have to wait for type checkers to support it. <laughs> only going to be six plus no uh anyway hopefully you found this useful if there are additional things you would like me to explain leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms but thank you all for watching and i will see you in the next one